Hello, and welcome back to Vermont Craft Tours. I'm Sarah Scully. Happy Distaff Day, everyone. Um, it's Sunday, January 7th. I'm going to post this video a day early. I usually post on Mondays. And I'm posting early today because it is Distaff Day, and it also happens to be Spinning Group Day. Um, we have a local group that meets once a month on the first Sunday of the month, and today, because Spinning Group and Distaff Day landed on the same day, I uh, thought it would be appropriate um, to talk about some of the tools in my spinning toolkit. Um, so a distaff, in case you don't know, is a stick um, that is used to hold fiber while you're spinning, so it frees up your hands. Um, sometimes the stick is just a plain stick. Sometimes it has ribbon tied on it. Um, there are cage distaffs that will hold the fiber um, in a little cage that you can pull out uh, bits and pieces at a time. Um, they're often used to spin things like hemp or flax um, because those don't draft as easily in your hands as wool does. Um, but you can also use a distaff to spin wool. Um, I don't use a distaff. My wheel does not have one built into it, and so it would be another um, thing that I'd have to kind of manage, like hold it in my arm or something while I'm spinning. So I don't use one um, uh, typically, but um, I have used them for reenactment type spinning where you um, would tuck it into your belt and then pull the wool off and use a hand spindle. Um, that's kind of a, an interesting way to spin, but not how I typically do. But I do use um, some modern tools to help me in my spinning, and so I wanted to share those with you today. So the first one is um, this thing. Um, it's a wraps per inch tool, um, but it's a little different than some others that I've seen that are maybe notched here um, or just have markings here. Because this is made from clear plastic, you can actually hold your yarn that you've spun up um, behind it and kind of figure out how thick or thin your yarn is. And then the numbers here correspond with wraps per inch. I got this um, from a maker off of Etsy and I'll try to find her again and link to her shop in the show notes. Um, but this, uh, you can see I have um, some yarn here and I just hang it off the side of my wheel and that way periodically I can pause and make sure that I'm spinning to the same consistent thickness um, for the style of yarn that I happen to be making. So that's really handy. I use that often. Um, of course, I have my orifice hook that came with my wheel and my wheel has a fairly narrow or orifice so this is handy for pulling the um, fiber through. Um, I use spinning oil. Always good to keep your wheel well oiled if it's knocking or chattering or squeaking or if the tension seems to be a little funny. Often it's actually a problem with the oil and not with the setup of your wheel. So that's good to have. This has a long applicator on it so you can get down into the various um, parts of the wheel to apply oil right where you want it. And then another tool I use are these bobbins um, for holding my yarn, my singles, before I ply them. So um, if, you, if you read um, or take watch videos by like Judith McKenzie or other well-known spinning instructors, um, usually they will tell you to spin a whole bunch of your yarn into singles before you start plying it. And what that allows you to do is mix up your bobbins. So let's say I had one day where I was spinning a little thicker and another day where I was spinning a little thinner. Instead of plying bobbin one and bobbin two together, I might ply bobbin one and bobbin six together and bobbin two and bobbin four or something. And that just allows you to kind of pick and choose and make sure that all of your plied yarn is as consistent as, as possible. Um, but to do that, you have to have a lot of bobbins. And the bobbins for my shocked ladybug wheel, for example, go for about $45 or $50 a piece. They're pretty expensive. So I can't afford to have, say, 20 of those bobbins ready to go. Um, but I found these, again, online. They're called Bobbins Up, and they're by a company called Art You Wear. And again, I'll link to these. Um, and they cost about $5 a piece, and they come with this spindle, removable spindle. 
So the way this works is that you spin your yarn on the bobbins that go with your wheel, and then you can take this thing and put the spindle in, and it slides into this little groove. And then you'll notice this piece sticks out, and that is shaped exactly to go into a power drill. So you take the power drill and put this in there, and then you can use that power drill um, to wind your yarn off, off, off of your bobbin on your wheel onto this storage bobbin. Um, and they're great. I got a pack of them, I think I got 20 or 30, um, and so I can spend a whole bunch of it on a sweater's worth um, before I ply it. The other nice thing about this design is that you'll see on one side there's a grooved um, kind of whorl built into this bobbin, and that allows me to put this on my tensioned Kate and run the tensioning thread across this um, if I want to have a tensioned um, set up when I go to ply them. I don't always use tension on my bobbins when I'm plying, but sometimes it's nice to have that um, as an option. So really like these. Um, they're affordable. You can get a whole bunch of them. And if you don't already have storage bobbins, you can make them out of things like toilet paper rolls or cut up um, paper towel rolls. Just use a chopstick or some other kind of stick and put them in a shoebox and store your yarn on there and then use that shoebox as, as an inexpensive lazy cake. So you don't have to spend a lot of money, but for a little bit of an upgrade, um, this is a really cool system and it's been working really well for me. Um, and then the last tool I wanted to share with you is my spinning basket. I really like this. It's handmade um, actually by a friend of mine. The husband of one of the women in our spinning group makes these. He makes them in all different sizes, but this is a nice size um, you can put a few balls of yarn, you can put a couple of bobbins in there and just keep it next to me and spin right from here. Um, you'll notice the bottom is slightly curved and so with this design just the points of this sit up so it has like built-in feet. Um, so it sits up off the ground slightly, it's very stable and I can um, again just pull my fiber out and draft right from here. Keeps everything neat and organized, keeps all my accessories together, and um, keeps, you know, lint and kind of floor dirt and stuff from getting into my fiber as I'm working on it. And it's also got handles, so I can just pick it up, take it with me, um, as I'm going to do this afternoon. Thanks for joining me. Um, I'm sorry I haven't posted any interviews lately. Um, it's been difficult scheduling people, but we will be back with interviews starting next week. So um, stay tuned for those. And again, we're going to be posting um, the fiber tour, the first fiber tour for May very soon. So in the next few days, um, you'll start to see information about that as well. Thanks for joining me and tune in Thursday. I'll have more tips and advice for you. Cheers. <music>